Viewers at home, the AI gods have blessed us yet again. And when I say AI gods, I really mean the amazing research teams out there producing all of this amazing technology for us to explore and test out. But yes, like I say, they have blessed us yet again, and this one is a particularly interesting one, and you guys will be very happy to know that this one is completely free to test out on your own, although I must say, like has been typical lately, right after I post a video, a lot of times the servers get really clogged up on whatever little AI topic I'm covering, so be wary of that, you might have to wait a bit, the servers can cool off. Today, the AI we're looking at is a model or multimodal unified framework. So you guys might remember the term diffusion being related to something like stable diffusion, the open source AI text to image generator. And this model we're looking at today can do text to image. Basically, what we're looking at today is an AI that can do it all, a Swiss Army AI. Yes, the particular selling point or interesting fact and feature of today's showcase is this thing has the ability to do your basic text-to-image, you know, mid-journey, stable diffusion, Dolly 2, but it can also do image variation, mostly only seen with Dolly 2. It can also do image-to-text, which none of the big text-to-image models can really do. So this would be like you input an image and it gives you a prompt based on the image, like text image in reverse. It can also do something called text variation, which we will get into. Entanglement, dual guided, and latent space exploration. So those last four, you might not know what they are, but we'll get into all of them and test them out in today's video. Oh, and really quick guys, I highly recommend you check out my Discord channel linked down in the description below. We have a fantastic community on there. If you ever need help with any kind of AI or you want to find out about the latest and greatest in AI tech, check it out, link in the description. So credit where credit is due, there is a GitHub repo and a search paper for Versatile Diffusion, yes that's what it's named, Versatile Diffusion, which I will link down in the description below. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe this is going to be open source, but it isn't fully open source yet. As you can see, the training weights here are coming soon, but you definitely can still connect to this on GitHub. I believe. Again, I'm not too familiar with how GitHub works, so correct me if I'm wrong. Versatile Diffusion is the first find multi-flow, multimodal diffusion framework. Steps towards universal generative AI. Reminds me of OpenAI. Versatile Diffusion can natively support, yes, all the different tasks that we mentioned earlier in the video. Future versions will support more modalities such as speech, music, video, and 3D. So yeah, those are some pretty big tasks. Versatile Diffusion is coming out with the punches, man. Promising speech, music, video, and 3D? That is no joke, and we'll see if they can deliver. And again, you can try this thing out for completely free on Hugging Space via this space. So obviously the layout is pretty simple here. We've got text image, image variation, image to text, text variation, disentanglement, dual guided, and latent. Again, I'll explain the ones that we don't know about yet. So let's try out some basic text image. We've been spoiled lately in the text image world. Midjourney V4 has taken the text image place by storm lately. Very, very good results from Midjourney V4 as we've seen on this channel. And also some particular stable diffusion based dream booth models have been almost competing with Midjourney V4 like I talked about in my last video, which you guys should check out by the way. Text image at this point has pretty big shoes to fill. What are we gonna get from versatile diffusion? Let's do a lemon prompt to test this thing out. 3D render Pixar style, cute lemon character relaxing on a tropical beach. And again, we have a set seed here. You're gonna wanna change this every time for different results with the same prompt. As you can see, it's very fast, but it's probably gonna be slower for you guys right after watching this video because of the server flood. And as you can see, we get some generated images. These aren't particularly amazing, I will say. But, I mean, a lot of parts of the prompt are still here. We've got our lemon character, we've got our tropical beach, and it's very coherent overall, I would say, in comparison to some older models. These images might be very reminiscent of stable diffusion. And the reason for this is because this is actually using the Leon or Lion 2B database, which is a very big text image database. So the training data typically ends up somewhat similar to something like stable diffusion, which uses the same database. As you can see with a similar prompt here in Stable Diffusion, we do get very similar looking results. This one actually came out shockingly good, I will say. And, you know, changing up the scene and regenerating, we get pretty similar results. 
With prompts that are a little bit more detailed, such as this one, we are definitely seeing more coherent and usable results than my lemon prompt. As you can see, we got this little bunny character over here. I ripped this prompt straight from Playground AI, which I will say definitely produced a better result. So I would probably put Versatile Diffusion's ability to do text to image somewhere along the lines of Stable Diffusion. Here are some of the examples that Versatile Diffusion's creators actually came up with. This is a dream of a village in China, and yeah, these are fairly decent results, I think. Again, pretty similar results to something we would get with just regular Stable Diffusion. Here is a beautiful grand nebula in the universe. Pretty good results with this as well. This is a little bit more of a complex prompt. This is like a toy. Fairly coherent, I would say, all things considered. Of course, if we do something very simple like a photograph of a cute kitten, pretty fantastic results. So the text to image ain't half bad. It's nothing mind blowing like we've seen with the fine tuned Dream Booth models or Mid Journey V4, but it's not too shabby. However, don't forget, this is the Swiss Army AI. It can also do image variation. Generate images conditioned on reference images. We'll try this image I used in my recent thumbnail for Playground AI, and we will do an image variation. All right, guys, now I must say this is impressive. This is where we can really start to see the Swiss Army AI pull through for us. This image is definitely better than these two images. However, this was a custom Dream Booth model in Playground AI, so that's very, very good model. And these variations though, I mean, they have all of the winning characteristics that we are expecting for from this image. It's got the background blur and a nature background. The girl has the same exact color hair, same facial features, same eye color. The face looks very, very similar, but it's just tweaked and varied enough to be different. Very impressive result, very, very good. I would consider this variation on par with something you'd get from Dolly 2. So if you're looking to make image variations for free, this seems like it could be a very promising option. Let's see how it tackles a different style. This is a pretty abstract Dolly 2 generation here. This is a lemon character sort of vibing out and dancing. Ooh, okay, you can see with a much, much harder image to replicate, things get a little scary. It was able to pick up a lot of the key details, okay? We got the greenish yellow background. We've got the yellow basic body. We've got that purple color in there still and the leaf on top. And we've got some arms and legs, but it's not nearly as coherent and wasn't really able to pick up that it was a lemon character shape. This one I'll admit is a little lackluster though. However, we don't really have many good variation options, I will say, in the text to image space at the moment. And that was a tough prompt. We'll try now this portrait of my dog. Again, the realistic stuff it really seems to like. Okay, I mean, we're getting somewhere with this, I will say. The images are very coherent and realistic, photorealistic looking. They're good images. However, that's not the same dog breed by any stretch of the imagination. And it seems to be like a combination of dog breed where it's like putting two sets of ears on the dog and yeah, it's just kind of a little bit screwed up. However, the coherency department and the texture on the fur and everything looks very, very good. So you can see it's got some really good training in some areas and in some areas it's lacking a little bit of training. This is some very abstract art, so this should be pretty good for it. And wow, it actually tackles the abstract art very, very well, producing some pretty fun and interesting results. Very similar to the original image, actually. Pretty cool, I like it. Some image variation results that they provide themselves would be like this spaceman image, and you can see it, you know, captures most of the details of this image. Or they have this photo of a train, which it does a pretty decent job with as well. Now we've got image to text. For those of you who haven't explored this before, this one's pretty fun. This is like reverse text to image. Let's try the same photo of the girl that I used in the beginning. It believes this photo is a beautiful teen girl, woman by blonde actress, beautiful brunette posing for her pictures, starling with her bride and her blonde bride, beautiful daughter, haired girl, daughter, blonde, blonde, bride, brunette, girl, bride. Yeah, so I mean, it, it has a pretty good idea of what the image represents. Again, let's take this prompt now and toss it into stable diffusion. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it has a decent enough idea of what this is. Uh, these results, though, are honestly kind of terrifying, I will say. I mean, that is a scary creature. 
Let's try the same lemon cartoon. <laughs> this one's funny. Man with a colorful tomato fruit fruit drawing a cartoon picture of a toddler chewing mango, bananas, and food. Um, fruit tree, banana fruit, fruit friendly cartoon, cartoon. Okay, that's good. Fruit man with cardboard leaf on hand, orange fruit. Yeah. I mean, it got the fruit part and the leaf part, but I don't know where it got the toddler eating fruits and all that. Very interesting result. However, of course, that's a tough image to describe. We'll take this stable diffusion generated image of a scarlet macaw here. Pretty decent. It got bird, that bird, red bird, ocean color bird, and fire in the southwest, orange, trees, trees. I mean, it got some decent text out of that, I would say. It's nothing magical, though. I would say that the image to text at the moment leaves a little something to be desired. I'm most impressed with the image variation thus far. However, I do expect them to improve upon this in the future. So it notes for text variation that these results are still very experimental. So let's do our text input as photograph of a cute kitten. And again, this is going to create variations of our text. Pretty cool. Little girl photographed a cute kitten of a pink photo cat. Photograph a small cat looking a cute photo of pink baby toy. Picture of a cute baby cat on pink carpet. Photograph of a cute baby, a pink cat. I don't know why there's so much pink in there, but pretty decent little text result, I would say. This one's not as useful as the others, I would say, but still pretty cool to see. So they use their dream of a village in China here, and then they get some text results here. Some similar-esque text, I guess you could say, to what you get from the original text input. And yeah, you kind of get the result here. I'll, I'll skip over this one a little bit because I think it's one of the least interesting ones, but you can sort of almost see into the way that one of these AI models thinks about text. It's pretty interesting. Could be interesting to find some new prompt ideas. So disentanglement here. What is disentanglement? I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. Well, this is actually a build off of their image variation technology. And this generates a variation of the reference image that is disentangled in some way. A more semantic result is in the negative one or two range and more style would be in the one to two range and level zero is just basic variation. So as you can see, this is their input image here and their results are more semantic here and this is what they get. So this is a little bit more realistic so they're more logic related to results more realistic results but if we do the same thing and we push this all the way to two so this is more stylized and artistic and we run the same prompt we get very very stylized results far from the logic we saw on the semantic side of things and this is a really really fun way to do image variations and i think it enhances the image variation experience a little bit and the fun factor for it Pretty cool result. We'll take my YouTube logo generation here that I did in Dolly 2 a while ago and we'll do a very stylized result variation based off of this. As you can see, we get similar imagery here, but it's super stylized and like really crazy. I really like these results actually. These generations are super fascinating. Like, I love the mask-esque look to this in the background here. This is a really, really fun and cool stylized creative result, I think. Really, really cool. And if we turn this all the way down to the logic side of things, the semantic side of things, and run the same prompt, we get stuff that looks more like it should be a variation of it. It still looks pretty creative, but nevertheless, these are very logical results and what I would expect out of a variation. Pretty interesting though, still, I, I must say. It might be really interesting to take something that might be very, very logical or realistic and then apply some stylization to it. Because you might end up with some results that aren't necessarily typical variations, but much more creative variations like these two for example which both came out really fantastic i must say it seems like it's got a photorealistic strong suit to it this model really really interesting results here so far disentanglement is definitely my favorite one of these little models that are all wrapped up into versatile diffusion really really fun stuff dual guided you might be wondering is actually another form of image variation. This one's also really, really cool. We do an input image and a text prompt and we mix them together to get a final result. Powerful stuff. Not many models offer this kind of capability. So as you can see in this example, we have an image of a Mercedes and then Cyberpunk 2077 is the input and it sort of combines them together and gives you a cyberpunk looking Mercedes. Again, not really many settings, but we do have this guidance mixing setting. Zero is all the way down, more guided towards the image, and the one is more guided towards the text. Let's take the same image of the girl and we'll do 
Cyberpunk 2077 as our text input, and we'll see what happens. And wow, we get some fantastic results, I must say. Again, has a photorealistic charm to it, this model. Definitely reminiscent of the original input image and um, just kind of unique clothing. Definitely interesting images, creative images. I like the result, but I would not say that it's necessarily cyberpunk related. Just for fun here, we're gonna do this AI generated image of Mark Zuckerberg and our text input is going to be caveman. And I mean, we definitely got caveman as a end result here. It doesn't really resemble the initial image very much, but I guess these are pretty good images of cavemen. Fairly hilarious, I must say. We'll see if we can convert this photo of my dog into a wolf photo. We're gonna set the guidance mixing at 50% here. Actually, these images resemble a lot of the variation that we saw earlier. These aren't particularly interesting. But yeah, in general, dual guided can be a lot of fun and I'd love to see what you guys make with it. So this right here is more of an image exploration option. Latent I to T to I. Generate image variations via image to text, text latent editing, and then text to image. So it's kind of a weird process. As you can see, the example they give here is this image here. Then they say, remove the prompt White House and add the prompt Tall Castle. So this is like editing in a weird, very texty way. Very interesting idea, and I've never seen anyone do this before. And it actually kind of works out pretty well with these images, I think. We'll do a little test here. I'm using this AI-generated image of buildings inside of a lemon. It's kind of an abstract image. We're going to remove the buildings and hopefully replace them with outer space. Well, we definitely got some interesting images here. Um, not really working as intended. I believe this one's still in the experimental phase as well. They do provide another example here. Fruits and bottles on the table is what they want removed and they wanted to replace them with flowers and it sort of works out here I think in the end image overall. Nevertheless, pretty cool stuff. So viewers, tell me what you think at home in the comments below. Is this thing cool? The Swiss Army AI can do all kinds of different crazy things. I think they're pretty cool overall. Feel free to test it out for yourself, it's completely free, and please check out my Discord server and some of my other videos on this channel. Lots of really cool stuff going on in the AI space, I think you guys will agree. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.